Have you ever wondered how fast the TechBlock PC currently is? We have none other than the i7 4770 CPU in there, non-K, it can't be overclocked, but we still have an RGB liquid cooler on there. For one reason and one reason only, that's an RGB liquid cooler, it looks cool and it serves no real purpose really other than making the PC look pretty. Uh, we may as well just have like the Intel stock cooler on there and nothing would really change. We also have 16 gigabytes of Corsair DDR3 RAM running at a whopping 2133 megahertz after I overclocked it. Actually, I don't even know if it is running at 2133. No, we're back to 2133 megahertz. I just checked on Task Manager. We are indeed running at 2133 on DDR3, dude. Lightning fast RAM speeds there. And for the graphics card, we have the latest GTX 917 there from EVGA. For the win edition, we have a whopping 3.5 gigabytes of video RAM in there. Very, very fast. Taking a look at the actual cooling that we have in this system, as mentioned earlier, we have the NZXT Kraken cooler, cooling the CPU that can't be overclocked. And to top it all off, every single fan in this PC is currently set to exhaust. Many people have pointed that out after we built inside of the GameMax Chroma case here. Uh, the reason they're all set to exhaust is because all the fans then look real good, but the temperatures kind of go up a little bit. But that's not the point here. This PC is an absolute monster. We even have a 1050 watt RGB power supply from GameMax that may be faulty. The one actual good thing about this PC is that we have a ton of SSD storage, at least a ton for me I guess. We have an M.2 NVMe drive in there from XPG, currently limited to 10 gigabit per second because of the old motherboard. It can't quite support the full speed of that M.2 drive, but that's going to change soon. Uh, we have three Samsung SSDs in there, just normal SATA 3 SSDs. We have a 500 gig model and then two 250 gig SSDs in there. So we have a total of like four SSD devices in this PC. And you know, that's the one real good thing about this system, I guess, is that we have a lot of SSD storage and no hard drive storage at all. We have a tech block logo on this case as well. And just a hell of a lot of RGB lighting from NZXT and the GameX Chroma fans. There's a lot of RGB going on in this case, but now that we've kind of covered all the, you know, badass specs, I'm sure you're dying to know how fast this PC really is. So, as most of you already know, in the previous video, we did unbox the Ryzen 7 2700X CPU and the Asus X470 ROG Crosshair 7 Hero motherboard uh, to Awesome components. Unfortunately, there's no RAM yet. The RAM arrives tomorrow, so expect some videos of me actually building that new PC. But for now, we're going to be benchmarking this PC, as you can see by the title of the video. And uh, I'm sure you're dying to know how fast this PC really is. Now, the resolution that we're going to be running at is 3440 by 1440 on the BenQ EX3501R monitor that you can check out by pressing the link in the description down below if you want to learn more about this monitor. It's Pretty nice. HDR, we have AMD FreeSync. Unfortunately, I don't have an AMD graphics card though to take advantage of AMD FreeSync, but it has it for all the people that have AMD graphics cards. It also runs at 100 Hertz. That is a very nice. So with all that said, 3440 by 1440 on a 35 inch curved monitor. That's our resolution. That's our monitor. Here we have 3D Mark Basic Edition. I'm going to be running some benchmarks so you guys can take a look and compare your own systems perhaps to my one and see how much better your PC is than mine. Because all my components are pretty damn old. And I'm pretty sure the majority of you watching this video have significantly better systems than I do. So here we have a 3 Mark. Let's go on to, uh, we don't want Time Spy Extreme. Can I just get Fire Strike? Yes, that is what I want, Fire Strike. Let's hit run. Collecting system info. There we go, running benchmark. Okay, so we're not running at 3440 by uh, 1440. Perhaps we're running at 1080p. Graphics test one, dude. There we go. 55 FPS. We have a whopping 40 FPS, dude. Wow. The results are in. A total score of 9,700, a graphics score of 11,600, a physics score of 9,416, a combined score of 4,444. So graphics test 1 around 55 FPS, graphics test 2 around 46 FPS, and the physics test 
uh, just under 30 FPS there, combined test 20 FPS. These are definitely some record breaking numbers here. Taking a look at our run details here, other results in 3 Mark run, 4K gaming PC, 17,805, gaming laptop, 10,850. So the tech block PC is 58% better than all other results, I guess. It's kind of in between a gaming PC that meets the minimum spec for VR and a gaming laptop. So we're just in the middle of those two there. I was actually expecting the score to be a little worse, but uh, it ain't too bad, I guess. So let me know what you guys got in the comment section down below. You can run this test as well. 3D Mark Fire Strike is free to download. I'll leave a link in the description down below in case you want to download it and run the test yourself. Just bear in mind that the file size is pretty big and it may take a while to download if your internet is a potato. Taking a look at the actual settings here, uh, screen height 1080, screen width 1920. So the test did indeed run at 1080p. Uh, as I kind of expected, I guess, as if it would have run at 1440p, rest in peace the FPS. It would have been like 10 FPS. Now that we've benchmarked the PC's gaming performance, let's go ahead and benchmark like the overall system performance, I guess. I'm using a software called Performance Test version 9. I've used this software many times in the past and uh, I don't know if anyone else really uses it. I don't see any tech reviewers ever use this software. Maybe it's just me, but uh, I'm gonna press Run Pass Mark and it's gonna run through a crap ton of tests, testing of CPU performance, GPU performance, RAM performance, SSD performance, all that good stuff is gonna do all that for us. I'm gonna stop OBS recording, exit out of that, just so we have like a clean run, turn off Google Chrome as well. So yeah, gonna press run benchmark. Oh, is that run? There we go. You are about to run all the tests. We'll be back in a few moments. Yeah, this test is uh, is pretty weird. So we're now finishing up with a 2D graphics mark. I'm gonna hop into some 3D graphics now. It's gonna get pretty weird, I think. We are getting a whopping 160 FPS. Impressive. <laughs> so this is the DirectX 9 test running right now. Wow, so this is the DirectX 10 test. We're getting a whopping 150 FPS here as well. This time running at a resolution of 1680 by 1050. Moving on to DirectX 11. What resolution will be running at this time? 1920 by 1080. Getting a whopping 200 FPS once again. Are these like jellyfish floating in space? Moving on to DirectX 12. What will this be? Okay, so this is DirectX 12. We're getting a whopping 60 FPS, running at 1340 by 1440. Uh, the test tried to run at 4K, but uh, it didn't. So we're running at this resolution instead, which is okay. As this looks pretty cool. We're flying around in space. Moving on to GPU compute. What on earth is happening? We're getting a whopping 1000 FPS. I can hear coil whine as we're hitting a very high frame rate there. Starting GPU Bitonic, what is that? Uh, more GPU compute tasks, all right. 700 FPS in here. We have a pass mark, OpenCL. Some more GPU compute. Uh, running at around 800 FPS right now. Moving on to memory mark now. The rest of the tests I'm um, guessing will be very unexciting. Moving on to disk mark. Benchmarking our NVMe M.2 SSD. Running at 10 gigabit per second, so not its full speed. All right, so taking a look at our actual full score here for the system. Uh, for the entire system combined, we got a score of 4,990. For CPU mark, we got 9,814. For 2D mark, 788. 3D mark, 9,043. Memory mark, 2,563. And then disk mark, we got a score of 7,481. By the looks of things, we're not doing too bad in like overall system performance, I guess. Uh, we got a total score of 4,990, just shy of 5,000. And I'm really quite interested what's gonna happen to this score. The moment we put the Ryzen CPU in there and the brand new RAM, I think this is definitely gonna jump up significantly. And then when we go ahead and upgrade the graphics card next month as well, this total score is gonna jump up a whole lot more. And uh, I think we're gonna be like in the 95 percentile, if not higher, I don't know what's gonna happen really. But the score with the new system is going to be significantly higher than this, I think. And for the final test of this video, I'm currently transferring over some video files from my Synology NAS across the room there. So I'm going to transfer over those files and I'm going to render out 
a five minute 4K video. All right, so for those wondering what settings I'm using for this 4K 60 FPS export, we're running at 4K 60 FPS, scrolling down. We have hardware encoding enabled, profile high, level 5.2, uh, the bitrate settings, VBR one pass at 40 megabit per second. And that's pretty much it for all the video settings. For audio, this is set to 3200 kilobit per second on bitrate. Uh, you know, nothing else really too exciting there. I'm gonna disable previews actually. And apart from all that, three, to one export and I've began the timer as well. So I'm guessing this is probably gonna take around 10, 15 minutes to export, uh, five minutes of 4K 60 FPS footage. All right, so we're past the 10 minute mark. Apparently there are five seconds remaining. Three, two, one. 100%. When this goes away, I shall stop the timer, but it's not finished just yet. There we go. 10 minutes and 36 seconds it took to export this file. All right, so I hope you enjoyed watching me benchmark my PC here today. We ran Firestrike, we ran Adobe Premiere and Performance Test, just testing the overall performance of our system, I guess. And yeah, apart from all that, everyone, thank you all for watching. Hope to see you in another video soon. Goodbye.